very warm well welcome to you. I'm honored that you are here. Today we are going to talk a little bit about SEO with Joomla. My name is uh, Christopher Wagner. I am team lead of the Joomla SEO team. And whenever I give a presentation, I bring a couple of current information. Now, what I brought you is the search metrics study about the ranking factors. The data is from 2015. Today, this is still true, but Google has self-learning algorithms for business area. So let's talk about the ranking factors from that time, which are still true today. One of the factors is the total amount of backlinks. You see the Google positions here, one to 30. Here you see the amount of backlinks and these are averages without Wikipedia. Here you always see the correlation. Correlation means if you have one of the one backlinks, you get higher positions. It's a positive correlation. More of the one, higher rankings. So you see that on position one, the total amount of backlinks is quite high. In average, about five and a half, five and a half thousand. You see that this is decreasing. Now, referring domains means in the essence that when you have a link from one domain, you have a domain pop of one. You can have 10 links from that domain, then your domain pop still is one. You see that on position one, the referring domains are a lot lower than on position two, three, and four, and five. Looks like they have been doing link building, but apparently not achieved high rankings. The story I always tell at that point is, I have a good friend, his name is Cliff, and uh, we tend to have the same taste. We go to Bach concertos, and when Cliff recommends music to me, I tend to listen. And since Cliff always has a couple of recommendations, a lot of these recommendations, I tend to watch and listen to this music. So what Google is trying to do is incorporating real life facts into the algorithm. If you have 100 recommendations from 100 people, let's say you go, the, the person says, go to the bakery X because the bread is very good there. Then you tend to go there. If you have the good friend who has the same taste like you do, you tend to go there as well. So building good business partnerships and having websites that recommend you multiple times is likely better than having a lot of other websites recommending you. Because you see the domain pop here is lower. So the first positions need in the essence to have more links from one domain. Link age, very important. You see here the, the um, days in average. So sites ranking on position one with an average age of 580 days. Why does Google do that? <clears throat> Google wants to avoid that you just go at it and spam it, build links, and then go at it and uh, be higher in your positions. So if you are trying to do block, comment, spam, that's not going to work hasn't been working for a long time. In a lot of the...
let's talk a little bit about what Google loves. We need to think about um, what keywords we want to rank for, that we have excellent content for that, and that we satisfy user needs. In the past, it was all about having the one website on your domain that is very good to get the visitors in. Today, it's about website concepts. So, if you have one relevant page as opposed to 10 irre irrelevant pages, then you're likely not going to do well in rankings. I always say, because I'm a huge Babylon 5 <laughs> fan, yeah, if you cannot mean what you say, no, if you cannot say what you mean, you can never mean what you say. The details are everything. So, you need to be crisp and short. Let's talk a little bit about crawl budget. Crawl budget is the amount of pages that Google crawls at a certain time. So what they are trying to do is look at how healthy is your website. Does your website respond as fast as it should? If it doesn't, they decrease the crawl frequency. They want to be a good citizen of the web and not overwhelming your, your server. Crawl demand is defined by the popularity, aka uh, page rank. Who doesn't know what page rank is? Okay. Um, in the past, or the, the, the project draft name of Google in the past was Backrub. So what they did is they, they went to websites and looked at the anchor tags. Um, let's say Holiday Home Denmark links to this and that page. So if you have enough pages linking to that, then it's likely that you are in top positions. Yeah. So if you have a lot of recommendations, your page rank is high, and therefore you get a lot of cr allocated crawl budgets. Now, a lot of, a lot, in a lot of the times I go into projects, there are a couple of development fuck-ups that uh, unfortunately developers are still doing. And uh, I'm going, you can see that here in the URL, it's a Google post, I think of 2015, where they show all the problems that you have. Faceted navigation, for example, is, uh, uh, you know, you want uh, some candy and you put in the price range and, uh, you know, maybe taste regular or whatever, and you have a lot of combinations that can be displayed and that, in the end, give you this URL. By nature, this is all irrelevant. Yeah. My favorite in a project, I couldn't uh, give you the project, um, is uh, canonical link elements with session parameters. So, when you, <laughs> you shouldn't use session parameters in the URL. Please use a cookie or whatever, but not in the URL. So what the developers did was uh, they had the domain, and of course, they had a URL to display, and uh, each time you crawl, you get, you get a session parameter, and then the canonical link element was with the session parameter. So if you have a canonical, and Google says, oh, this page needs to be really important, but actually, this page was, I don't know, these pages are like 200 times in the index because Google thinks if you're using a canonical telling me that this page is important, then of course I need to index that. Yeah? Same goes for duplicate content. Yeah? You see that, that this is the same URL and that it can be called with a lot of, lot of, lot of queries and URLs. Shouldn't do that. Let us have a little excursion to our Joomla extensions directory. We are currently in the process of optimizing that and uh, we have about 8,000 extensions, a couple of content pages, pages in index 112,000 at that time. So something isn't right there. So I did a crawl. It took 27 hours, used six gigabytes of RAM, and we found 321,562 HTML documents. If you are having about 8,000 plugins, components, whatever. That is a very, 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 very bad sign. I need to tell you though, as a disclaimer, the current uh, Jet team didn't fuck that up. We had the company hired that uh, got money actually for doing this job, which isn't quite well done. Who? Ooh, yeah, ooh. <laughs> so what, one, of, one of the easy steps if you want to look um, at how many pages or what pages Google is indexing is you use the site double point parameter and then you just enter the domain. You can vary, vary that with uh, various uh, search parameters. So here's a crawl 
uh, of the extensions directory. You see here we have comjet review 5 1 limit start equals 0. Uh, the start and limit start delimiters are always used um, to show pages of a category. So limit start equals 10 means you have um, article 1 to 10 in that. So these URLs shouldn't be in the index. You also see that uh, in the that we have a lot of URLs with profile, profile details, and whatever. Uh, we just started de-indexing them. Then I don't know what we are at now, but about 80,000 pages in index. And uh, that, that is quite nice. With the profile URLs, let me just see. I think we have about 80,000 URLs that can be called with profile. You see Google only indexed 45,000 of that. that. That's always a sign that something isn't right here because Google doesn't like the, the quality. And um, we have will not achieve high rankings. So optimizing for crawl budget is one of the key things if you are an SEO and if you want to optimize your clients' websites. Let's talk a little bit about our new router. Who is happy with the router that we have right now? Raise your hand. <laughs> Who's unhappy? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Um, we are going to... Uh, uh, do trailing slash by default. We are trying to remove multiple trailing slashes. URLs are going to be in lowercase and uh, we are going to look at it that we know index search result pages by default. The thing is that if you go to a search page in Joomla um, and if you have Google Analytics uh, in the page, then you send a post by default. Google doesn't follow the post request. Sure. You enter the term and then you hit search, this is the post, and then you get the results. But if you have Google Analytics in the page, then Analytics gets also called on these search pages or search result pages. Thus, Google goes at it and indexes that, which is not a good thing. In, in terms of routing, we have uh, a student uh, with the Google Summer of Code, um, and uh, he is more or less fixing that. There is going to be a lot of discussion um, how the code is going to be done. We have uh, a lot of code uh, that uh, renews the way that URLs are displayed. What we want to do or what has been discussed is that we remove the IDs and the URLs. So for example, uh, category 20 slash category, uh, dash a category name and that we want to clean that out. And one of the main things why I joined the SEO team is to fix all these fuck-ups that unfortunately we have and I want to move us to having what I call a bijective URL structure that means one-to-one. -one. We have a lot of ways in displaying content with Joomla and unfortunately Google often tends to find links that are irrelevant in the URL structure and indexes them as well. That's duplicate content and what Google is going to do is they are going to counter test the two or three pages and see which performs better. 
which doesn't help you in rankings because these pages always cannibalize their rankings in the Google search results. So be aware of duplicate content. I know that a lot of people say duplicate content on the same uh, domain isn't a problem. It is a problem. Google tries to find out what are the relevant and important pages by looking at your site structure in terms of menu and displaying these pages in the search results on top. But uh, the other pages get indexed as well, thus wasting crawl budget. Let's go back to the orthopraxis in Bonn. I have shown you how I optimized, or I will show you how I optimized for crawl budget. Let's have a look. <clears throat> so here we have about 45 pages. You see here that the pages are available as well with the is mobile parameter. So these got indexed as well, which is always bad. If you're doing that, you should uh, use a canonical on the mobile page to the desktop page. And what they did is they have, um, they have uh, had two pages, um, common disease types, joint arthrosis, and then they said therapy with joint arthrosis. But what I did is I put these together. So out of 110 pages, we made it to 35. So what you now know is that flat, flat URLs are very important, that you should manage your information, that you should de-index unnecessary pages. If you don't want them crawled to optimize for crawl budget, block them once they are de-indexed with the robots TXT and reduced to the essential. When I got added, we have the current information, details, date 2013, opening hours, Happy Easter. So that's something that you shouldn't provide for Google because it's, it's irrelevant. What, you, what I always do is you go in the system, you remove the files and you go into your HD access and you put in a redirect 410 gone, which looks like that. And then Google and other search engines know that these resources should be removed because they are not accessible anymore. A trap. Um, is near duplicate content. We had uh, the doctor set cards before, and uh, of course, we know that Dr. Sippel is an orthopedic doctor, and Google is quite intelligent in, in terms of finding out what the page is about. So if you have near duplicate content, always give Google a hint. This is a link to the domain root with the keyword. What page should rank for that keyword in your site structure? Um, optimizing the internal link structure is uh, one of the main things to achieve high rankings. When you do a relaunch, please always use Rear one redirects where you can. Gary Ilyas has said that FreeOx redirects don't lose page rank anymore. I've seen an example where this They have done big, great relaunch. They have done a lot of marketing saying, hey, we have a new site, it's all better. What they did is they forgot the 301 redirects and you see how they plunged in visibility index. They lost 90% of their equity in Google due to missing 301 redirects. Don't do that. So. What I, what I did uh, in terms of moving these pages together, even though they are not the same, I said, okay, common disease, joint arthrosis, disease type joint arthrosis, and the therapy for joint arthrosis, I put into the new page as well. So this here, joint arthrosis was the first article, and this is therapy with joint arthrosis, and I just put them together. And actually, next to, uh, seeing to it that, that we get some local links. This is the whole secret of the project success. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about PageSpeed 100 and why this matters. 
in 2006, I think, Google has been doing an experiment and they said, okay, we put in the post header delay of 500 milliseconds. So what you did is you went in, you searched, Google had the results, but they delayed the delivery for 400 milliseconds and this accounted for 0.6 less searches per user. Now, if you're Google and if you have the business model of selling ads, then this is a lot of money. Amazon also found out that 100 milliseconds delay cost 1% of sales. Glasses Direct had one second delay minus 7% conversions. Optimizing for speed, if you are a shop, is one of the key performance indicators for projects, project success. Now, Google um, displays in the search console how many resources are crawled. You remember that from the Penguin before. And you see the response time here. So this is, this is the time it takes in milliseconds um, until you have the HTML answer. So you see that we decrease that here to about 400 uh, milliseconds and you see that this correlates with more pages crawled. If you have a shop and if you have a lot of products then you want as many pages crawled as are relevant to achieve high rankings and be in the index and response time is one of the key um, figures for achieving that. Um, the tool that you can use uh, for that is uh, the Google PageSpeed Insights. They are going to tell you where you're fucking up. What they are looking at is response time, caching, CSS, HTML, JS reduction, render blocking scripts, and so on. Now, how do we do that with Joomla? Response time recommendation of Google is to be below 200 milliseconds. You can enable the cache, and you can, uh, the system cache, and you can enable the page cache. By default, this is going to cache your content and deliver it a little quicker. I, one, of, one of the things is that, you know, not everyone is looking at the speed thing as they should. And uh, I've uh, seen plugins that uh, took about 600 milliseconds to execute, even though they were very, very small plugins, like just a form um, and uh, very bad code. Form removed, response time 100 milliseconds. So if you are a developer, then you should look to it that your component is really, really fast. How do I measure that? You use your browser, open with a hit the F12 key, go to the network tab um, and uh, press Control F5. And then you see the first get request, Autobox is born. And here you would see that it answers in 112 milliseconds. If you're optimizing for time to first byte, if you're a shop, then you could use Cloudflare, Cloudflare to reduce the DNS lookup time. Google always comes from the US, so if Google is in the US and fetches the DNS, that means you have the URL or the, the domain and uh, what IP address is behind it. So they are going at it, fetching that, and doing that from the US to Germany takes 300 milliseconds. So if you want to be quick, then use um, the Cloudflare DNS service because they have a very, very low lockup time. Image optimization is also a very, very interesting part. I had, oh, there's, a, there's a nice story to that. I had a um, hairdresser in, in Bonn as well who were doing extensions, hair extensions. And of course, they, 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 put, in, they put in a lot of images and what they did is they put in the original image and just resized it. That page was six megabytes large. <laughs> so if, if you want to optimize um, you know, for, for local rankings, extensions, and a city, then having a page that is six megabytes large is likely not going to be good because likely people are also looking on mobile connections for your site because they say, okay, well, what could I do now? Don't know, get a tattoo, have extensions. Yeah? And um, you're not going to rank high in that instance. Uh, one of the ideas to understand that is, you know, they are putting the image in that size and they're resizing that to that. And this diagonal here is your data overhead. Uh, and you want to avoid that. When you put in images, also always tell the browser how big the image is in height.
please recrawl it or please refetch it after a month or so. So you're going to store that locally and not have a problem. How do you check that? F12 key, network tab, select the element. Here is a JPEG file. Uh, it was fetched September the 14th and it expires October the 14th. CSS should also be reduced. Um, empty spaces should be removed, comments as well, because this is all bandwidth that you need when uh, you fetch the site. JavaScript as well. You see, I think this is uh, a jQuery function that Google is delivering on their server, so they have trimmed the functions to ABC to have less bytes submitted. Render blocking scripts. Now, if you put in JavaScript, and of course we all use JavaScript in our web pages, then the browser goes at it, fetches the HTML document, and fetches the JavaScript. JavaScript by default is render blocking because the browser needs to execute the JavaScript before the browser continues with rendering, painting your site. So you should use um, the method of putting the JavaScript below the end of the body because then the main content of the page is rendered and the JavaScript are executed. There are, however, instances where you would need JavaScript right when you start rendering the page. So interesting information is provided by Google. They have optimized their page speeds inside web page and uh, the presentation shows how they had been doing that. Data compression, very interesting. On JAP, uh, I learned uh, from Alexander that uh, Netflix didn't enable data compression. So when they did that, they reduced the data sent or transmitted by 47%, which uh, probably was a huge advantage in terms of traffic bill. You can enable the, the compression in the HD access with these rules, output fil filter deflate, that's it. How do I check that? Hit the F12 key, open the network tab, and have a look at transmitted and size. So if transmitted is a lot lower than size, you're doing well. Content prioritization. I am going to show you that. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, what, what you do is in the first HTML response, you put in the styles that are critical for your rendering. Why do we do that? Because in, when you have it in the HTML uh, response, this is the first page that you fetch, um, you can start painting the page instead of waiting for all the other CSS scripts. So that gives you an advantage. Now, if you have optimized for all that, usually you put in external scripts like Google Analytics, like Facebook scripts. And uh, Google PageSpeed shows you you have 95 out of 100 points. How do you get 100? Well, you serve the scripts locally. What we do is we have a cron job at the server that fetches the Google Analytics script and we deliver it locally. So here, this would be google.com, but it's now Autopax is born, and there we have the analytics scripted. If you want to be fast and if you are lazy, just use JCH Optimize. It's simply the best tool for optimizing for page speed with Joomla. Available for WordPress as well, works great. For Drupal and Magento, it doesn't yet. We test it, and uh, I think Sam Marshall is going to have a lot of time investment to do that quickly. What CCH unfortunately doesn't do is remove unused CSS. So the template overhead uh, of the selectors that you are not using um, will be delivered each time you call the page. And you can get rid of that if you use Purify CSS. A little bit about the server architecture, four cores, SSDs, Nginx cache, and PHP 7. Who doesn't use PHP 7? Raise your hand. Oh, why? Why don't you? No, no, I use it. You, who doesn't? Who doesn't? 
Why don't you? Uh, because one of the components for them is uh, <laughs> yeah, PHP, PHP 7 uh, roughly scrapes off half of your response time. So in the essence, of, with, with PHP 5.6, you had 200 milliseconds. With PHP 7, you're likely going to be uh, with, at, at 100 milliseconds. PHP 5.6 can be fast if you use the opcache and the send optimizer, compiling the scripts to machine code and executing them. And um, in that instance, I talk about my cache server and HTTP2. <coughs> HTTP2 has been developed by Google and they started developing that in 2009. It's the new protocol that drives fast web applications currently. So this is not about these important information. If you want to uh, photograph that because there's a lot of interest. Images show a lot more than words. So <clears throat> this is HTTP 1, six concurrent requests, zero seconds delay. This is HTTP 2, a lot faster. Now, if you're on mobile applications, and you use HD1 with one second network delay. This is how this goes. If you use HTTP2 with one second network delay, this is how it goes. What is the secret behind that is that they are able to send as, as much as you want or as much as your server resources allow, but by default, they can push 100 resources through the network stream without going back and forth and um, blocking the delivery of the page. So this technique is called multiplexing. See, we, we have the first GET request, we get the response. Then in the HTML document, we know, OK, we have CSS, let's fetch that, response, respond. And in here, you can just multiplex these files and just send them in one data stream. One connection for all, it saves resources, and especially on mobile applications, it's very, very fast. If you have a response time on the 3G network, typically 300 to 500 milliseconds, uh, then using HTTP2 is the way to go. How can you check that? Once again, no waterfall, network tab in the browser, and you see, if, if you see this picture here, then HTTP2 is enabled. HTTP2 has also a very interesting function, which is called server push. And um, here you get the, the first uh, HTML document and right here you push screen.css. Why do you push it? Well, you know that for the painting of the HTML document, you're always going to need the screen.css. Usually what happens is you have the first response, then the browser interprets what files do I need to render the page and there is a little delay of a couple of milliseconds until the browser fetches and until you get the documents. So with server push, when you know what you're using or what is necessary to deliver your page, um, you can just push it through the stream right after the first response and you save this interpretation time by the browser. Uh, can I use .io? Unfortunately, is down. It uh, has been a very, very nifty tool to find out which browsers would support the HTTP2. Um, today, almost all do. so. There is no worries about that. Google is using that, Facebook as well. They switched to HTTP2. And uh, if you are using SSL, there is no reason you should not use HTTP2. Yeah. Is, that, like, is that just a setting in C panel or something like that? I, I don't hear you. Sorry, is that just a setting in C panel that you switch to HTTP2? Um, it, it depends how your server is configured. Uh, I don't know how far the Apache project currently is. Uh, we are using the Nginx cache server because Nginx can do that quite well. Um, and we have an Apache behind that. It depends a little on what provider you are using. Uh, 
Uh, we, we don't have the setting because it's, it, it's all custom done in our server infrastructure, but I know uh, hosting.de, for example, they, they offer that by default when you use uh, SSL. You can test that with the speedy uh, SSL, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, with the HTTP2 tester, you can put that into the browser or you look at the network tab. If you want to know what I know, just read that, it takes you two days. Now, title and meta descriptions, let's do that short and crisp. One of the easiest way to optimize your rankings is optimizing for click-through rate. So, joint arthrosis, the topic of the day, um, the title is Joint arthrosis, what is that? Which therapy options? Joint arthrosis is the wear and tear of joints in old age. Genetic predispositions can be favoring. Click and find out if you could be affected. And the click and find out if you could be affected is actually the whole trick of the high ranking of this page. Because people say, oh, there could be information that is relevant to me. I'm clicking on that. Sitemap uh, is quickly explained. Uh, uh, who doesn't know what a sitemap is? Raise your hand. Good. Um, you use the Screaming Frog SEO Spider. Um, in the free tool, you can scrape up to 500 URIs and then you just say create a sitemap, create images sitemap. Be aware though that you create a sitemap that doesn't have duplicate URLs or waste of crawl budget URLs that I talked before in them. Robots.txt, that's very interesting for us in the Joomla project because in some instances there are old robots.txt or old Joomla versions that block important information like scripts, JavaScript and CSS. And in October 2014, Google has uh, said that if you disallow that, it can result in suboptimal rankings. So if Google says that, then it's going to be the truth, of course. You can test that with the webmaster tools and see if you have any issues here with uh, disallowed directories. And if you see there are zero errors or warnings, that's fine. Mobile optimization, well, we try to, to keep the steps to uh, the customer's calling as minimal as possible. So what we are doing is uh, putting in a hyperlink with a phone number so that yeah. Amount of uh, grown-ups, amount of children. Children is always very important because you want to know uh, how many you have. They are just dirty. So Google My Business optimi optimization is uh, also very, very easily explained. When you do a local search, you have uh, the results displayed as here. You see that we have 3.9 points. Unfortunately, that uh, is not as well because there are a couple of patients who complained and if one patient starts complaining, the other starts complaining. So the trick here is to establish a process that uh, happy customers will give you a recommendation on Google+. What is um, ranking factors? Is the proximity of the business, how complete your profile is. In Germany, uh, you are obliged, obliged by, by uh, legal how would you call it? Recommendations? No, it's not. It's a, it's a legal duty to have an imprint and you should do that as well. Um, put in images, text, describe your business and don't just put in you know, one image. That's, that's not going to count. The customer wants to find out what your practice or what your business is about. So doing that with one picture just doesn't add up. Use a little more, use well-optimized uh, pages. We have been looking into using accelerated mobile pages. Unfortunately, in that business area, we haven't been ranking high. Um, what accelerated mobile pages is about is in the essence, a progression of rendering above the fold. I showed you before the styles directly in the head of uh, the HTML document, and this is all that's, that AMP is about. 
you see that with AMP we would have eight GET requests and 110 kilobytes and with the responsive mobile 521 kilobytes. One of the things that is due to be done is to remove the template overhead and I think if you remove the template overhead you have the same thing as going in with uh, Google AMP and uh, I don't know if we should use that. That's all. Yes. Yeah, in terms in terms of uh, speed of sight, um, yes. What, what what's happening, and the essence of what the, the, the uh, patents of Google are about is, they go in and uh, find out how quickly a site is rendering, and if the site is quick, users tend to not get fatigued as much, and continue clicking through the site and staying on the site. It, it entirely uh, depends on your competition. Now, if your competition all use AMP, then you should use it as well. Yeah. Do you find that my site was the first of my competition? You know, they're not able to use it. But yeah, we've tested it. We've tested it, and here it didn't work. I, I honestly don't know uh, how Google is uh, evaluating that. In the news business, everyone nowadays uses AMP uh, because it's just a lot of it's a lot faster. Um, but being the first mover here in five months hasn't given us top positions, unfortunately. Questions? Yes? Are there any kind of plugins or tools which you learn that fix some of the stuff that isn't quite fixed yet in the core that you would recommend? SH4 for Ceph, yes. Um, I hope that with uh, 3.8 we are going to have a lot of the fuck-ups fixed. Yeah. Uh, we are. There are a lot of uh, good SEO plugins. <coughs> the the only you know if if you are looking at um, uh, the, the news display of the page, for example, uh, then you could always no index follow that the menu to fix that. But to have the no index follow on the on the news or on the uh, search, um, you need to put in a menu item, link it to the search, and then make it no index follow. <coughs> Apologies. Yes. Um, you mentioned about um, putting inline CSS in the head for a quicker initial rendering of the yeah. layout. Uh, that's not, that's not uh, inline CSS. Well, well what's... Uh, well, not inline, yeah, it's like yeah. in, in page six. Yeah. Yeah. Even rather than a separate file. Yeah. Um, is there like a, you know, so I guess a separate file of cache Multiple pages. Is there a happy, you know, if you got a feeling about how much you put in the head for that? For that <coughs> well, JCH Optimize is going to do that for you. Uh, they have uh, options for 200, 400, 600, and 800 uh, elements to put in. Uh, it entirely depends on your critical rendering path. So, what selectors are very important to quickly paint the page in the first response? There are tools on the web that uh, can check for critical path. Just Google uh, critical rendering path, CSS check, and you'll find some results. Data. 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 Ah, okay. 
Okay, so yeah, this is actually for energy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are doing that actually. Yeah. But uh, on what size menu still would you say? <coughs> you know, because usually you would use it for icons. And yeah, all. Uh, icons, um, order and unordered list icons or whatever in the actual sense. I, I do that, uh, but for larger dimensions, I don't. You prefer just to use the just to do the rest of it. Okay, <clears throat> then we are done. Thank you very much.